What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I'm actually live streaming right now. But I told everybody in the chat that we were going to watch the Katie Morton video together. And this is a good one. I actually just, I'm uploading a video as we speak about dealing with my alcoholic mother. So I don't know. I thought this would be fun. I'm just going to do a commentary on Katie Morton's new video about dealing with toxic uh, parents. Maybe talk about what I agree with, disagree with, whatever. We'll see how this goes. And I might be replying to the chat too in here. So let's watch. She's got some jams going. Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Now today we're gonna talk about toxic parents. Before we jump into that, are you new to my channel? Welcome. I put out videos on Mondays and on <laughs> Thursdays. So make sure you're subscribed <coughs> and have those notifications turned on so that you don't miss out. But let's get into this important topic. Katie's like really cheery. I, I I appreciate that about her. It's just like that's not my that's not my style. Like I like she probably is that you know that cheery though. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Katie, that I paused on this part. Because I received a question and it says, "Hey, Katie, I have a really difficult time with my parents, and I'm just not really sure if you can shed some light on how to deal with parents that are so toxic." And I've gotten this question from a lot of people because a there are parents and b. By the way, real quick, um, this for everybody in the live stream or anybody who watches, I want to start doing this on my Patreon. Like, if any of you in here are one of my, like, 25 Patreon supporters, um, <clears throat> or no, not 25, my, like, 11, or, t like, give me questions on Patreon. Sometimes we live with them and see it makes it really difficult, and we also love them, and it's just so complicated. But I have a lot of helpful tips that will hopefully get you to a healthier and happier place, and maybe even make the relationship better. And my first tip is to get into therapy. And I know that may not be available to all, but I've also I've done some videos in the past that, with BetterHelp. It's a great resource online for therapy. So that's something that if you can't oh, wow, access you're it, talking about better home, maybe that's another way to, to gain access to therapy. But also, if you're in a school program, you can go to your school counselor and they can refer you to someone. Or if you are an adult and have a job, a lot of them have HR departments and you may have an EAP. It's called an Employee Assistance Program, which offers free therapy. Yeah. Or you can call your insurance and get a list. There's a lot of ways to get therapy. So don't feel like it's impossible. Don't feel like it has to be expensive. A lot of therapists will work on a sliding scale. But it's just really vitally important that we get into therapy so that we have a place to Look at vent. That and to talk about all that we may be going through, and most importantly, to get some support. And it so like, that's good. See, this is, this is why, like, this is why, like, I made that video about Katie Morton and ethics and stuff, and like, like, she's, she's good. Like, she's like me. I'm sorry again, Katie, for pausing on a weird face of yours. But anyways, like, that, like, she, she's in the same place where I am. We're like, I don't care where you get help, just go get help. You know, so like we'll promote better help if that's an option for you. If you feel like that's your best option. My lovely girlfriend who is in the live stream right now, she doesn't have health insurance. Better help gave her a sliding scale. But even if you're not working with better help, ask a therapist like Katie just had on her screen and mentioned, ask them if they work in a sliding scale. Like the treatment center I'm about to start working with or I am working with now, like they have discounts and sliding scales. Like we want to help people, but we also got to keep the lights on so i appreciate katie for doing that but yeah you need somebody to talk to about this stuff and process like and this is for all of you it's for all of you who follow my channel and stuff like i do my best i do my best to try to reply to all of you and talk to all of you and have personal time with all of you but i'm only one person like the goal of my channel is to provide you with tools and resources that you can use like i want to teach you how to improve so like I can't be all of your counselor or therapist or whatever, so I try to guide you to resources. So I, I, I try to make that clear with anybody I work with. Like, don't only rely on me. Like, you need somebody who can be there for you regularly. I know that a lot of people just say, hey, get into therapy. It's really important. But, but just hear me out for a minute, and I'll tell you kind of why I believe it is so important. I think therapy helps because the relationship is different than any other relationship we've had. The relationship that we have with the therapist is one-sided, which in normal life isn't healthy, but in therapy, it is so vitally important to making therapy work because the therapist is putting that whole hour or two hours a week or what, however long you see them towards you and understanding you. 
which means you get to tell the story from your perspective and there's no one judging you and there's no one saying, no, that's not how I remember it happening or I don't know, your mom actually seems pretty nice when I see her. No one's back talking you. Yeah. No one has any perspective. The therapist only knows what you tell them and that can be really mm -hmm. healing. Not to mention that a therapist isn't gonna yell at you. They're not gonna lash out. They're, it's not a scary place. It's, it's not a romantic thing. It's, it's a very benign, healthy, happy conversation that you can have in this safe space free from any judgment or anger. And I know. Yeah. Like this is something that a lot of people don't understand. Like, you know, like it's so important to get an unbiased point of view. Like this therapist has no ties. Like I get a lot of people who say like, Oh, well I have my friends or I have my sister or brother or whoever it is. Like if they know that other person and have a relationship with that person, it can go one of two ways. Either they over agree with you or they don't agree with you, right? But a, a, a therapist, or like what I try to do, I try to take in the information from a completely objective place and say, okay, what can we do? You know what I mean? So like like Katie mentioned, they a therapist isn't gonna be like, oh, uh, uh, you, you know, your mom seems really nice, or this seems really kind. My, my mom does amazing family therapy sessions. But yeah, I, I just really, that's why I like what Katie does. Um, because I don't know if she has a private practice anymore, but I guarantee she has helped thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, if not millions of people, just at least make the step to go get therapy. And like, that's what I aspire to do. I know that that seems really crazy, but if any of that's happening in therapy, if your therapist is angry or anything like that, oh, yeah. I mean, that's a bad therapist. I have a whole video I'll link in the description about how to know if you're seeing a bad and a good therapist. So we make sure you get put with the right one. But if you're watching this, sorry again, Katie. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like Katie, see, Katie's transparent. She says there's good and bad therapists, right? That's what I keep telling you guys. I really want to collab with Katie, but I'm not big enough for her to care about me yet. Like, that's my only resentment towards Katie. But I get it. I get it, Katie. One day, Katie's going to come knocking on my door. She's going to be like, Chris, we need to collab. Let's talk about alcoholic parents. Let's talk about traumatic childhoods. Let's talk about addiction. Katie's going to come to me, but if any of you guys want to help, uh, feel free to tweet at her. Therapy can be healing because that relationship is different. And so just trust me when I say it's really important. And I honestly believe therapy can help any of us, but if we have a really toxic parent or even just a toxic family environment, having a space that is ours where we can talk about how we feel and how these things are affecting us can be really, really healing. So I encourage you do it today, reach out, speak up and get the help that you need and deserve. And my second tip is set and uphold boundaries. Now I know a lot of you are going to say, Hey, my parents won't respect them and they'll step over them and it's not even worth doing. It's always worth doing. And here's why boundaries in a perfect world would be something that we'd be able to communicate to another person and they would respect it and they would uphold them with us and they would understand. Damn. But in a toxic environment, it's important because it protects us as the person setting up the boundary. Let's say we have a really abusive, whether it's emotionally, physically, sexually, doesn't matter, parent in our life, or just toxic, just coming in and telling us shitty things about ourselves, which is really emotional abuse, by the way. But if they come into our room and do that to us, maybe we study at a friend's house. Maybe we stay at the library at school. I would limit the amount of time that you spend at home. And then I would look into maybe getting a lock on my door. If it's okay, I don't want you to be in an unsafe. I don't want to create a more unsafe environment. See, and <laughs> God Damn it, Katie. Quit making these faces. All right, Katie. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I talk with my clients about this all the time. All of the time. Like, I tell people. Like, I tell people all the time. I'm like, yo, cut that person out. Or you got to quit talking to your mom. You got to quit talking to your dad. You got to quit talking to your brother, your sister, your best friend, whoever it is. They're like, but I can't. But I can't just stop talking to them. I'm like, the hell you can't. Like, what do you mean you can't? Of course you can. Like, the, but then I try to get down to the root of it. Like you're, you're worried or you have this, this, um, idea in your head that you have to have a certain relationship with them. Um, I, I talk about this in my new video about forgiving my alcoholic mom. I had to quit talking to her for a few months to protect myself and heal myself and, um, begin to repair our relationship. I needed that boundary and that distance. So yeah, like, I get really real when I talk about this stuff. I tell people the hell you can't 
cut somebody out of your life. I don't care if it's your mom, your dad. I don't care if it is your child, okay? You have to set up boundaries. Sorry, that's a rant. I'm really adamant about boundaries and maybe I'll make a video about it. For you, like physically or emotionally, but I would spend the least amount of time around them and I would try to communicate as much as you can to what you know safe is for you, but that you you know, wish that they would talk to you this way, or it's really hard for me to communicate with you when you yell, or whatever you can say to start letting them know what's okay and not okay for you. And I know that that doesn't work in every scenario, but boundaries are always important. Even if the boundary is, I'm not gonna be at home for more than two hours at a time, unless I'm sleeping, because it's just too much for me. Yes. Or I know when that one parent gets home, and I can leave. I can, I can join that one club that meets at that time and that will get me out. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do to minimize our time. If we don't live at home, it can be I'll only talk to my mom or dad, whatever parent it is, when it's on my terms. And so I'm not going to ever pick up the phone when they call. It's only when I call. And that's just a boundary I'm going to set up because when they call, they're always yelling. I don't know what it is, but you're going to have to take some time to recognize what is upsetting to you because boundaries, our body tells us when someone's crossed mm -hmm. our boundaries. It usually makes us really uncomfortable we can get really rigid or we can like shrink down it can we can physically feel when a boundary's crossed and so i'd start there there's a good photo of you katie um but yeah this is really important too like this is why therapy is so important this is why i love making content this is why i love katie making content like it's really weird how the human brain works. Like there's something called motivational interviewing, right? Where you help, you help guide the person to bring, uh, to, to get their own conclusions about the situation. But I can't tell you how many times, how many times I've brought up an idea to somebody and they're like, I didn't even think about that, right? Like that's why you need a therapist because we get so stuck in our own brain that we're not even thinking about this. Like the stuff that Katie's listing right now, I've talked to so many people about boundaries and they haven't even thought of that. Like they haven't even thought of like, oh, limiting my time at home. And you know, like they haven't thought about that. So man, I just love, I love mental health and helping people. It's so important. Start paying attention to that. Start noticing what it is they do or say or what things they set in motion with other people in our families that we find so upsetting. And then I would minimize the amount of time that you're engaging with that kind of behavior and find ways that you can kind of distance yourself from it and it all depends on whether you live with them or not but you can figure it out if we don't take care of ourselves first we're not going to be able to engage with people in a loving healthy way Look. so don't let that one person in your life take that from you it's okay to set up healthy boundaries and if they earn trust and respect back we can you know alter the boundaries as needed they're a living breathing thing that we can change as we go but we're going to need to protect ourselves first and so mm -hmm. recognizing when they're overstepped how we feel and then placing them and upholding them and communicating them as much as we can, whatever keeps us safe, mm -hmm. is really important and imperative when dealing with a toxic parent. So, like, I know Katie's, like, thing right now is toxic parents, but, like, to kind of, like, um, expand on what she's saying. So, let, let's say you're married, okay? So, you're, oh, I don't know, let's use me. I'm, let's say I'm, I'm a husband. I'm not married. Let's say I'm a husband. And my toxic parents... Are, and I don't have boundaries with my parents, it can screw up my marriage. You know what I'm saying? So I can't be the best husband I can be because I haven't set up boundaries with my family members. And I, I hope that makes sense. So how can I be uh, a good husband or how could I be a good child? Um, how could I, uh, not a child, but how could I be a good father to my child? So like, it's, it is so important that you get help. You get help so you can help others. I've mentioned it in some videos recently about putting your oxygen mask on first so you can be there for other people. You know what I mean? Like I do not keep toxic people in my life. I absolutely do not keep toxic people in my life because it, it makes it so I cannot be of service to other people who need me. And my third tip, save your money and get out. If we live with them, I know this only pertains to if we live with our parent, but I know that a lot of you told me you do and you can't get out save your money and get out we have to keep ourselves safe and i know a lot of you are like well my siblings are still there i know this is hard mm -hmm. but you don't have to keep dealing with the emotional abuse or the physical abuse or just the toxicity of your family to protect your siblings so this is this is about developing the internal locus of control which i talk about find what you can control okay you can go get a job you can go make money 
you know, you can do this and this and this. Now, what Katie's talking about is it is not your responsibility to save anybody, okay? But going back to the last point, you can't save anybody until you save yourself. What I would recommend for anybody watching my reaction to this, use that as motivation to better yourself. If you have siblings who are still in a bad household, you move out and do your thing, right? Go get, go get your education, go get a job, save up money, do what you have to do so you have a situation in which you can take them with you. You know, so it might take time. A big issue that we have as humans is uh, patience. We're, we're very impatient, you know, but like, let's say you have a brother who's seven years old, right? They've, they've done this for seven years. So you can, you can do it for another year until you have enough money saved to take them out of that household. Okay. But you got to help yourself first. There's no reason that both of you need to be in that house. If you're in the position to earn some money and get out of that situation. I know that's hard but they're on their own and you're on your own. Yes, if you get out, you can have them come live with you if you can afford it, but we just need to get you out. And also think about the kind of, if you're the oldest child in your family, you're like a role model and you're showing them that it's okay to speak up and get out, that family life isn't healthy because we don't want them to think that that's normal and something they should strive for. We want them to know it's not okay. And so in a way by leaving, you're actually showing them that they, you know, that you can be courageous. You're demonstrating all the things you're hoping that they will do too. And so save your money, get a part-time job. And this could even be moving in with another family member or a friend. Get out as soon as you can, because the longer we're in a toxic environment, the harder and harder it is for us to tear ourselves out of there. And the more we start to believe all the negative, nasty things they say about us. But mm -hmm. trust me, they're lying. They just feel shitty about themselves and it's overflowing onto you. Yes. But you don't have to take it. So save. Yes. Hey, everybody. I made a video a long time ago that that's, uh, the thumbnail says hurt people hurt people, right? And yeah, like the people who are toxic in your life, and man, I wish I would have watched this before I made the video about my mom, but um, you'll see that they're in pain. But again, like Katie's saying, you don't have to deal with that. You do not have to deal with that at all. You are nobody's punching bag. You get out of there and you're like, peace out. Save your money get out as soon as you can. And my fourth tip is to figure out what you want from the relationship. You, not anybody else. Not what society says a relationship with a parent should be like. Not what your friends have with their parents. Not what you've seen before. Mm. I want you to consider what you Preach, girl. want and what you need from that relationship. Take some time. I would journal. I would, you know, go for a walk and just think about it. Whatever helps get your you know, your mind going in a safe place. I want you to just consider what you need. And then maybe write a letter that you don't send to them. Or Ooh, maybe start journaling I love about how it feels to recognize what you need from them. Yes. And maybe that's upsetting. Maybe you're upset about how much you need. Time out, time out. This is for everybody. Anybody who's watching this video right now. Like I have people, like I made a video about relationships the other day. Like you need to watch or like you need to make like an ideals list, right? Whether it's with your parents whether it's with, um, if you're looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend or your friends, like write down, write down in a notebook, right? Say like, this is what a good friend looks like. This is what a good father looks like. This is what a good mother looks like. And then my, my next step to, to that, that journaling exercise, damn, I should make a video on that. The next step towards that exercise is then looking back at it and seeing what are realistic expectations and what are in unrealistic expectations? So for example, like if you said like a good mother is happy all of the time, I'm just throwing that out there. I would look back at step two of this and say, okay, is that realistic for someone to be happy all the time? No, it's not. Or if the expectation is um, a father should be there for me all of the time. Is that realistic? N yes and no. They can't be there for you 100% of the time. They have their own life too. So that would be a great journaling exercise. So if you're looking for um, a relationship or like what Katie's talking about with your parents, and again, like what she said, like what, what you need, right? Not based on what other people's families are like. That screwed me up for many years. I wanted my family to be like other people's families. And until I let go of that and accepted my family the way they were, then I can start building on boundaries and expectations and relationships and things like that you need from them or how little you need from them. Give yourself some time to kind of process it through and recognize this. And then the second step is to take what you need and want from them. And I want you to compare it to what they're able to give. 
And I know that's what I fine. said. I would actually recommend this person that's what I said. with a therapist because. Katie, why are we not collabing together? God, see, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little egotistical real quick and cocky, but like I have people like questioning my credentials and stuff. <clears throat> And what you're seeing with the better help fiasco and whatever, like those are just pieces of paper. Those are just pieces of paper. I'm going to school right now to get my, uh, you know, certified alcohol and drug counselor thing. Like it's just a piece of paper. That's all it is. And like, it's just a society thing. And that's, that's a whole nother rant. But like, you just watched uh, a licensed marriage and family therapist literally say exactly what I was saying to you. And I'm not a licensed marriage or family therapist. So I just want you to kind of gauge that. Um, and maybe I'm just saying that because I've had some flack since my channel's been exploding and people are like, well, what are your credentials? Well, I pretty much say the same things that therapists do most of the time, but I don't have credentials and I, I don't want to make it seem like I know everything that they do, but I just want you to kind of think about that for a second. Because it can be really sad and it can be really hard but it can also be something that you do on your own. I would just encourage you to take the time to do that because often we have these expectations of what a parent should be and what it should look like. Mm -hmm. But this is what they're able to give us. But then this is what we maybe need. And so we're gonna have to find some middle ground where there are certain things that they are able to meet. Like maybe we just need to have some kind of relationship and that means that we need to call our mom or dad like every two or three weeks for just like 20 minutes because we just can't cut them off. We're gonna have to figure out where we can meet. I wish I would have watched this video before I made mine. Dang. Like this is, this is, ah, dang it, Katie. But yeah, that's, that's really important when setting up these expectations. Like what can they give? In the middle, because there is going to be that middle point. It's just going to take us a little while to figure it out. So that's why we start with what we need from the relationship. And then we talk, we consider what they can actually give us. And we try to kind of meet in the middle in a place that feels okay where we won't be constantly disappointed or put in a toxic environment, but we're also, you know, cultivating the relationship that's important for us. One of my favorite sayings, I mentioned this in a video I did a while back, if any of you guys want to check it out, it's called your expectations are killing you. And one of my favorite sayings is my expectations are inversely proportional to my serenity. So the higher your expectations are, the worse you are, okay? So the sadder you get, the more depressed you get, you have no peace, no serenity, no ser uh, sanity, because you have these high expectations. So when you lower those and you start accepting and, and realizing these are humans too, and they might not be able to give the thing that I'm trying to get, you start to have more serenity, all right? And just take some time. And it's all about you and what you need, nobody else. And my fifth and final tip is... Introducing new Vix Sorry, Katie, I'm going to skip your ad. Love you, though. Oh, wait. Don't even have to skip it. There you go, Katie. Get that ad money. support. Whether that is a therapist. I know that was my first tip was to see a therapist, but that could be a therapist. But I'm also talking about other friends and other family members. Maybe you have other family who also agrees that that parent is a total jerk and they don't like them either. It might be good for you to have someone where you can talk to about it and they also know the person. So it kind of gives you... A little place to commiserate about how terrible it is but if this toxic parent is an alcoholic or a drug addict there's also Al-Anon or Alateen which are mm -hmm. free support groups yep. for family members of those who struggle who have addiction issues and that can be really really I helpful should put those too. in the link even if to you're my not video. comfortable speaking up in a group setting it can just be really healing to hear somebody else share their yes. story and you can see some of the similarities to your own so like I, when I say we talk about the problem but focus on the solution like it's very healing to know that you're not the only one going through stuff. That's why support groups are very important. Like Katie mentioned, Al-Anon, al, -Anon, al -Ateen, other support groups. Facebook support groups are great. Um, there's the Huddle app. Like it's great to know you're not the only one going through it, but in my opinion, that only gets you so far. Like there's only so much I can just like, it's great to know other people are going through it, but then I need to start getting into a solution with the other things she talked about with boundaries, journaling, therapy, stuff like that. And it can just remind you again that you're not alone and nothing's wrong with you. And I know people are always scared to join groups, but it, it can be the most healing when it comes to addiction because addiction affects the whole family. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you're getting additional support, whatever that can look like for you. Maybe it's groups at school. Maybe it's joining... Um, I don't know, going to meetup.com and joining another group over there, or maybe you join like an intramural sport. Just make sure you have other things going on that keep you busy, keep you out of the house if you live with them, and give you 
new support systems, new friends and people around you that you can talk to about all you may be going through. Because I find overall, the more we talk about something, the less power it has over us. The more we keep that toxic parent a secret and think that it speaks poorly to us, the more it's going to affect us. And so I would just encourage you to start sharing with those you trust and mm -hmm. love and start talking about it more and more until it loses any of that emotional power over you. And by the way, this is why you need to get rid of your crappy friends. Like, get rid of your crappy friends. Like, a lot of us, a lot of us have a negative voice in our head, and it comes from our toxic parents, right? That we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not pretty enough, or handsome enough, or whatever it is. You need to hang around people who aren't necessarily enablers, but people who will build you up and say, yo, 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 like, you're good, like... Don't believe that. Don't believe what they said. You know what I mean? You need to get better friends who build you up to counteract the toxic people in your life and that negative voice that's been put in your head. Because you, if you're watching this, you're a badass just to let you know. Because that's really what the whole process in therapy is about, is to get us to talk about something and to express what's going on without it having any emotional charge for us. And so the sooner we can start doing that, the sooner we'll start feeling better. I hope you found that helpful. I know so many of you are stuck with toxic family members and stuck in homes where you just feel trapped, but know that you're not stuck forever and we can get you out. Hopefully these tips, those five tips kind of help set things up for you and give you a perspective and some, you know, next steps you can take to work towards a healthier and happier life. Awesome. Let's freeze on Katie. So <laughs> we'll leave it right there. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, uh, I was live streaming this. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, probably now. But thank you so much for watching. There's links around here if you would like to subscribe or check out another video on my channel. Um, and yeah, if you're watching this, uh, tweet this at Katie Morton. I've been trying to collab with her for a year now, and maybe she'll want to collab with me. All right, I love all of you, and I will see you very, very soon.